Okay guys, what is up? In today's episode of Sound Architect, I'm going to be teaching you how to prepare your mix for mastering. Yes, that is tips for preparing your mix, your music, your songs for mastering, whether you do it yourself or somebody else professional does it. Whatever program you're using, watch this video. Let's go. Yo, what is up everybody? I am Legend and welcome to today's episode of Sound Architect. It's gonna be hopefully a quick tutorial, just one that I know needs to be done because Tuesday's video, I made an announcement that I would mix and master your music for free as a way to kind of help everybody, you know, lift the spirits up in this crazy time that we're living in right now. I get the feeling that a lot of people didn't pay attention to the video at all. Basically what has been happening is people have been sending me MP3 files and WAV files of their entire song exported. That's not the way that you prepare a mix for mastering. That's not the way to even get a song mixed. That's just an audio file of your song. And I'm gonna show you why. I think a lot of people watched that video, they immediately saw Mix and Master for free, they saw the email, they didn't bother to watch anymore, and they just sent the email. So, I'm making this video, it's supposed to be a different video today, but this has to be said because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to do anybody's song because everybody's just sending me their song and not the actual files that I need that I described clearly in the video. Tips on how to prepare your song for mixing and how to prepare it for mastering actually if you're sending your music off to somebody. Let's go into the computer and show you how it is done. Alright so here is GarageBand and again this goes for any DAW that you're using. It doesn't have to be just GarageBand. Um, it could be Logic, Pro Tools, whatever DAW you're using. The process is relatively the same. There might be like a couple different things that you do obviously because the user interface is different uh, but this is the process that you want to go through. This is uh, my song called Cheat Codes. If you haven't already heard my single from my new album and my new album the link will be down below but okay so this is what you guys are doing you're taking the song whether it be in your iphone on your desktop or whatever you're just taking the song you're sharing it you're exporting the entire song to the disc or whatever you're doing and you're saving it as an mp3 file a wave or whatever the problem with that is it's just an mp3 file so if i take this file that you sent me and i import it into GarageBand here let's just Look up uh, cheat codes. So I drag over your MP3 file to your exported song, right? Let's say this is the song that you sent me, the MP3 that you supposedly want me to mix and master. The whole point of a mixing and mastering is to get the audio levels right for each and every individual track, every vocal that you have, every instrument that you have, every background vocal or, or things like that. Every individual vocal needs to be able to be manipulated. This is an audio track of the entire project. There's no way for me to access the vocal tracks, the instrumental tracks. There's no, it's just one file. I'm not going on to miss no show. Yeah, yeah. So how do you expect whoever you're sending your music to to be able to mix this? The only thing that we can do as mixing engineers, mastering, whatever, is turn it up. Turn it down. There's literally nothing we can do with this because it's just an export of one file. I can't access your vocals. I can't, there's no way I can split. The technology does not exist to split this up to have each and every vocal that you recorded, all that stuff. So this is not going to work. For the people that you send your music to, this is not the way to get your song mixed and mastered. So the proper way to do this is number one, whatever program you're using just send the person the project file and the way to do that is let's say if i was sending an email and i wanted to attach my project file it could be pro tools it could be logic it could be GarageBand, it could be ableton it could be cubase whatever program software you're using whatever you're using the project file should have all of the audio files in the file itself all the plugins that you used all the automation that you used every single thing that you use should be in the project file so i'm here in my GarageBand file and what i would want to do is to just basically go to so cheat codes this is my song and you notice this is the garage band project this is what you want to send a logic project a pro tools project the actual file that you open up to open it up into whatever program you're using that's what you want to send to the person that is going to mix your music now it has to be a program that they obviously have that's why when i ask for the stuff i say make it be a garage band file because that's what i'm going to be mixing it take the garage band file and all you would do is attach this to an email if it's too big now this is going to be 500 gigabytes because remember this is including all of the files the wave files 
of your audio, your recordings, your music, all that stuff is going to be included. So it's going to be pretty large files depending on everything that you have included. Um, if you can't fit it in a Gmail or Google Drive or whatever it may be, you can use something like WeTransfer that can take up to two gigabytes on, you know, without having to pay for an account and all that stuff. But if you need something bigger, then you can get Dropbox or just pay for WeTransfer, something like that. So you would just basically take this, attach it to your email, drag and drop or select it when you import your files. And there is one way to prepare your file for mixing and for mastering for whoever you're going to send it to. Just send the project file itself. The project file not an mp3 not a wave of the exported song the actual project file it includes everything that somebody needs to do the other thing the other way to do this this goes for anybody who is sending their music off to somebody who works in a different program so let's say i mix my stuff in GarageBand, but you make your stuff in pro tools i can't open a pro tools file in GarageBand. they're two totally different programs so you would take this approach to sending me your stems when I say stems, this is what I mean by stems. I need the stems, which is each, and I talked about this in, a, in another video, each and every single track. These are tracks, right? This is a track, this is a track, this is a track, this is a track, this is a track. That's why you say track new. It makes a new track here. So these things are all called tracks, the things that you record your vocal on. You can also refer to them as stems when you export them. So what you wanna do, you take one by one, each and every individual track, and you export them as a WAV file into its own folder. So let's say I wanted to export this, right? I would take, uh, let's, I mean, we already have the music exported, so I don't have to do that. Um, the lead vocal, I would solo this. You press the solo button, so all these are gonna be muted. Everything's gonna be muted, except for the lead vocal. You see the way this goes? I got a message a long time ago and I miss no show. Boom, there you go. Also, before you do any of this, make sure your levels are good. So check your master volume, make sure this is not going into the red or the yellow. There we go, we're in the green. So I would solo this. It's the only vocal playing because that's the only vocal I want for now. You would click share or export or however your program exports songs and export it to the disc or however your, your thing goes to saving the audio file from your program to your computer hard drive. That's what you want to do while this is soloed. So it only exports the lead vocal. And then let's say um, we'll save to the desktop a new folder, cheat codes stems, and we'll create that. And we'll go with lead vocal. Now, some programs have a better way of doing this. They can allow you to export every single track all at once as, uh, you know, stems, uh, like a, a project of stems or whatever, the, all the WAV files. But some of them you have to do it individually because they're, they're free programs or programs that don't have that capability. I don't think there's a way to do that in GarageBand, so I, you just do it one by one. So this is the lead vocal right here. And we're going to export it into our cheat code stems folder and we're going to do it as a wave file because the wave is going to be the highest quality you export the lead vocal boom it's going to go through the song it's going to bounce the track just that lead vocal by itself now the thing is i didn't show this but in when you're sending a song out to be mixed you do not want to send your stems with plugins you don't want to send your stems with any kind of effects on it nothing like that you want to send them raw uh, and the reason for that is because whoever's mixing your music, they have to have the raw vocal to be able to manipulate it, to add reverb, to add effects, to add whatever they need to add to make it sit well with everything else. If you already have a bunch of plugins on it, compressors and all these things, it's going to be hard to get things to sit cohesively because they don't know, number one, all the plugins that you added. But number two, it's just not the raw vocal. And it's kind of like when you try to edit a picture that's already been edited, it starts to break apart after a certain uh you know, threshold or whatever. So you want to be sure that you export the raw vocals. You turn off every single plugin you have on the track and then you export it as the lead vocal or whatever you're going to do. Our song has, or our lead vocal has been exported to the file. So then we would undo that. But like I said, you would want to come here when you're doing mixing, you would come here and go to your plugins and turn each and every one of these off so that it's just the raw vocal here. The way this goes and then you would export that 
you know you would export that as the file so then you would come to the next track that actually has something on it so this has even if it has like a little tiny little thing here you would do the same thing here and then you would go file share export song to disk you got your lead vocal this is going to be lead ad lib or something like that one because there's a couple of different ad lib tracks you would click export and then that would export this track with this track as well then you would come to the okay that's muted that's muted that's muted come to the next one you would click share export you would export this track by itself as well so by that time we would have three exported WAV files each and every one of them are raw vocals because you turn all the plugins off and it's just your voice right and you would again come here do the same thing with this and then when it comes to stacked vocals um ideally what you want to do is you want to export these the exact same way one by one one by one uh export this stack then you would unsolo that solo the next one export this stack then you would unsolo that solo the next one export this stack all of them raw so that you have four different stacks of the exact same vocal just like how you record them you don't want to export them all together this is in the perfect world so that the person can mix even the stacks down to the way that they should be mixed and add the vocals the way that they should be mixed but in other situations where uh, you have a limited amount of tracks that you can send to the person like for for instance for me I'm doing my mix my free mixing and mastering in May but I'm giving the people a stipulation that it has to be under eight tracks under eight stems so this obviously wouldn't work because this has about 32 or 40 stems or something like that so in that case if you have a lot of stacking on your songs a lot of harmonies what you want to do in this case is don't export all like if you have let's say a three-part harmony that's four eight twelve stacks do not export all 12 stacks into one thing that's not going to be good because the 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 different um ranges are going to have different things that need to be done to them so what you want to do is let's say your alto note you want to solo those four all together the ones that are all the same note solo those four together make sure all the plugins are off you click file or no, you click share or however you do in your program and you export that entire full stack of four or however many you have on that note, just that one note and export that as a WAV file to the stem. So we'll go ahead and do that. Boom. So that's exported. You would unsolo these and then go to the next one and solo the next four, the next part, the tenor part or the soprano part or however many you have. It has to be the same note. You would repeat the process. Okay, until you do each and every one of these. So I would export these. And then I would unsolo those and then solo these and I would export those. So that way we have one, two, three wave files of exported stems of each individual part when normally it would be 12. So we're cutting it down to three. There's three. Then we have our lead vocal. That's going to be four. We have our ad lib and our ad lib there's five six and seven and then we would do i think that's it and then obviously you have your beat already so um again they have to be raw they have to be uh not mixing different notes with different notes because you, that again you're gonna kind of mess things up in terms of that make sure they're panned right if you're doing stacks because the person's not going to be able to pan them or actually don't pan don't pan your stacked vocals put them all the way down the middle uh, because then the person afterwards can do that however they see fit that's if you're exporting each individual stack this one and this one and this one put them all down the middle and let whoever's mixing them pan the vocals for you uh, but if you're sending them as groups then you would already want to have them pan because then at that point they can't pan individual vocals because once again it's all in one wave file so let's go to file new and show you what the person who's mixing your stuff would see and this is why it is important to do it this way. Updated beat. So this is our beat. This is whatever beat that you would be working with. You just drag that into GarageBand or whatever program you're using. There you go. That's the instrumental beat. There's no vocals on here. And you would want to set the tempo, but I forgot the tempo. No vocals, right? So then you would come here to your desktop or wherever you saved your files for me it was on the desktop we go to the cheat code stems so this is our lead vocal it's a wave file and then ideally this would be full of all the wave files of all the vocals i just wanted to save time and not export everything because it would take forever but this is what it would look like just with a whole bunch of different files your stacked vocals 
or your individual vocals, your sopranos, your altos, your tenors, your ad libs. Uh, each and every individual track would be exported here. So our lead, I would drag that and place that right under there, right at the start, because how this was exported, it's gonna line up exactly with what the beat is doing. So if we play it, you see the way this goes. Can turn it down. I, got a I can turn it all the way down. No show. No turn show. it all the way up. Yeah. So that's why it is important. Now let me show you the other one. Our stacked leads. We'll do the same thing here. Drag it and drop it. These are this is three stems, but if you don't count the beat, this two stems. This is going to be our stacked vocals. This would normally be four here if you exported it the right way, but since we're trying to keep it limited. In this case, it's going to be just one, but it has four in there already panned. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm adjusting the volume because the volume of the vocals were already up here and it was peaking the audio. Super loud, right? Super loud. And how do I fix that? I just take the volume of the stacked lead and I turn it down. This is why it is important that you export your stems, not an entire song. There's no way to turn down individual vocals if this was just one single file. If it was one single file here and this had my vocals in it and something was too loud. Like, let's say here, I want to turn down the snare, right? The snare's too loud. How am I going to do that? I don't have access to the... I either have to turn the whole thing down or turn the whole thing up. If I wanted to add a reverb to the kick, how am I going to do that? If I add a reverb, if I add a reverb, it's going to add a reverb to the entire song here. So this is why I tell you guys in my emails, there's nothing I can do, absolutely nothing I can do with a single export of an MP3 file or a WAV file that you send me of your song. It is impossible for me to mix that because it's all in one file. If I make one change to try to make one change to something, it's gonna make it to the entire song. You have to send me the Garage Band project file. If you don't have Garage Band, then you have to do this, export, each and every track individually and if it's over eight tracks you got to squash them down to have the stacks in here and like make it make sense the lead has to be by itself each stack that is on its own note has to be by itself um if you want to put the four stacks of the same note under one you can do that but it has to be individually separated like this otherwise because this is what mixing is otherwise i can't make changes the person that you're sending your song to they can't make changes there's nothing that they can do so send the stems when you're sending your songs out to be mixed and mastered mix particularly um make sure that you send the stems of the song unless you have the project file that is the best way to do it send them the project file if it's a file of a program that they actually have and that they use that they mix in send them the project file that's the easiest way to do it just send the dot band file the dot ptl whatever pro tools thing file is the dot flp Fru fruity loops Fru fl studio whatever that file is but that's how you do it that's how you prepare yourself and that is why that you need to do it this way because people they can't mix your music if you just send them here's my song that doesn't work thank you guys for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them down in the comment section below uh leave a like on this video if it helps you out subscribe if you're not already subscribed turn on the bell notifications set them to all so you'll be notified every time i upload a brand new video <sighs> next week it shall begin um hopefully if people send the stuff right and uh that's it guys love you stay legendary